Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, Kahalo Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahushai, Baal Shem Rekakodash. Once again, double honor, scribe to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone. All right. <clears throat> uh, who deserve double honors? Uh, salutations also go out to the Akim out there on the highways and byways, pushing us through the honesty and sincerity. All right, trying to wake up the remaining hopeful elect. All right, this is now out to DC camp, and ah, uh, this person that you see here on the screen, Ule. Yeah, you all didn't believe. <clears throat> all this time we've been telling you, it's people like this that work against us. All right, as a whole, they are set up to do so. All right. Their sole per well, one of their purposes, main purposes, is to maintain the status quo. All right, yeah, this is very sad, you know. But hey, this also highlights the fact of what we've also been telling you about the curses they were under, and this goes back so far. So you know, we keep falling for these things because again. This identifies who we are. You know, got to go to the scriptures. This ain't about the color black. It's not about Africa because we're not we're, we're not Hamites. You know, that's one of those tricks that we fell for because you just call somebody black. That's not a nationality. Again, even if you call someone African, that's not a nationality. How many? It's 54 countries over there. All right, so who do you belong to? What nationality are you? All right, that's the thing. And it was easy for the people who took our identity. Let me rephrase that. Who stole our identity and everything else. All right, it's easy to just call someone black and because the people there are predominantly dark skin, well, you blend right in. You get lost. I imagine that was their intent. But hey, you know, again, that was part of the curses. You go to Jeremiah 17 and 4. This is one of the ways in which we lost, all right? And that was told that it was going to be that way. It was told us. It was told Jeremiah, you know. Let's go and get that real quick. Thou, even thou, all right? Uh, let's go. Let's see. Jeremiah 17 and 4. All right, let's get the heading here. The sin of Judah. All right. All right, because by this time, the northern kingdom was already on this side of the planet. I mean, this side of the, on the western hemisphere here. All right. When you understand uh, 2 Kings 17 chapter and the split, uh, you know, 1 Kings uh, 10 and 11th chapter. All right. King Solomon, as he got older and things, you know, started to fall apart. But they had been at odds northern and southern kingdoms even before then. But that was just like the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. All right, so it says here, verse 4, And thou, even thyself, remember he's talking to Jeremiah. So what is he talking about here? And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. All right, so Jeremiah is a prophet here. So how is this going to apply to him? This is one of those scriptures that also goes to prove reincarnation, all right? He says, uh, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever, all right? All right, let's go back to the video, because this is one of the best videos Phil here has done. Again, sad but true, and he goes in on individuals like this, but the majority of our people are locked into this democratic plantation. Uh, actually, neither one <laughs> is in our best interest. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and get into this.
And this is the very same reason you got this weekend at Bernie's motherfucker that you all elected, elected in the White House because you went on your emotions. How many times has Great Millstone said that very same thing? We keep telling you these things repeat. All right, Ecclesiastes one and nine. All right, let's get that real quick. I'm gonna back it up. Everything I say, I want to back up by scripture. All right. <clears throat> vanity. This is King Saul. It says, a thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. These things have happened and they keep happening. All right. All the kingdoms we have ever been captive in, as in this one, we still are to this day, all right? Baruch 3 and 8, all right? We're still in captivity. And he, like in times past, is trying to please Massa and get a reward. And they, you know, as long as he does his job, hey? You notice, and he's going to get into this, you notice nothing is exclusively done for us, for our people. All right. Now, everybody else that gets elected, they do things for their community. But not only that, but you get so much pushback. All right. Like people like this no longer even try. They're going to give you a lot of lip service. Nothing's ever going to get done. All right. Unless other people, namely our oppressors, are included. And they've even got our own people to push for that. And he's going to get into that. I'm going to give it as much as this role uh, play. All right, so we can get to the end because it's like, like 15 or so minutes left. You hear what he just said? See, you, our people just don't get it. 
He just said, you can have all black everything. You're still not going to get anything because it doesn't mean nothing. We don't have any power. All right? See, he's still going to please those people. <laughs> all right? It don't matter. And coincidentally, when situations happen like that where it's all us, bad, horrible, all right? D.C. is a prime example. And they got the nerve to complain now because of all this gentrification. Well, you decided to play <laughs> this devil's game. Alright? You keep falling into his traps. The same old game is being played. <sighs> These people, have, we have been in their possession for so long. Alright? They know what they're doing. They know how to play uh, us for fools with ease. And we keep doing the same thing. That's <clears throat> definition of insanity. And, hey, look what our people have gone through collectively here. I mean, it's, we're talking about America now. Of course, it's the world, but mainly here. All right? And you have to ask the question, do you think your oppressor will want to give this up? See, there are certain things that are going to leave up, lead up to Jacob's trouble. And these things are happening as I speak. For those of you that somehow are not watching uh, the news that you should be watching, not that local shit, all right? Uh, Hey, it's about to go down. That shit over there happening in uh, Ukraine and Russia and all these lies that are being told. Russia's tired of this shit. Everybody's tired of it. Really, America. But you're seeing this split. All right. And, you know, lines are being drawn. And I don't think the majority of you realize just how close this shit is to firing off. All right. I'm talking about WW. One, two, three. All right. But anyway, back to this. I don't want to get off track. Uh, yeah. These are the people in these universities, these sociopaths they find among our people. All right. That they prop up that will do their bidding because all they care about is themselves, you know, and pleasing mass. Larry Elder.
again, what should come to mind? You can't serve two masters. Can't do it. All right. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter. Okay, but yeah, it's a little more complicated and in depth than that. All right, generally speaking, yeah, he's right. You know, we always say, you know, two thirds got to go of our people because they're just not going to get it. They've been blinded, and this is about Israel. This ain't about black and African and all that. All right. Of course, he's going on this, you know, as long as you know about the Philip Scott, you know, show, African diaspora and all that. So. I mean, he's on that too, but aside from that, he's right on point, <clears throat> all right? These are the things that our people, these, you know, have been putting up with for generation after generation after generation. That's why I always use the term colonial mentality or slash mindset, because it goes deeper than just saying Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, this goes into transgenerational trauma, all right, and, hey, as a result, you know, of curses, all right. Uh, but, yeah, I had something to read here because, you know, this is just <laughs> part of being, that I said, transgenerational. This is a book by Dr. Claude Hansen. It's called uh, Dirty Little Secrets um, about black history, its heroes, and other troublemakers. All right, Dr. Claude Hansen. He wrote uh, back in the 90s, uh, some Powernomics. And I had a book uh, around about that same time about, uh, what is it? 
Black Labor, White Wealth, I believe was the title of it. Excellent book. Yeah, same uh, guy, I believe, back in the day. He was in the Carter administration. I can't remember his. He was deputy or something. I can't remember. I believe he's from Florida. Been around a while, but um, yeah. In this one, um, page 91 here, it says conservatism and Samboism. All right, doesn't matter about which party, like we've been saying. All right, and it gives you uh, an example here about, let me find it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, it goes into uh, the young and naive. All right. <laughs> it gives the account, I'm going to go straight to it, of what happened on a slave ship that was coming from Africa to here. And it says, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to look past it. Anyway, young and naive, like I said. Uh, it says, from the earliest beginnings in Africa until present day, black people have responded to various forms of racism and human exploitation in a manner that is totally inconsistent with normal human behavior in their own best interest. All right. For whatever reasons, they have placed compassion and love for others above that of their own people. They have sought individual acceptance and advancement at the expense of their racial group. Contrary to conventional wisdom, it is difficult to blame such behavior entirely on the slavery conditioning process. Blacks were displaying such inappropriate behavior patterns before and during the early years of black enslavement. As early as 1704, when the Eagle a galley slave uh, ship had taken aboard 400 captured black slaves off the coast of Africa. A young black boy displayed the sort of inappropriate behavior that has been a bane or the death of black people's protracted dilemma. After just a few days in captivity, the slaves decided to revolt while they had a measure of temporary freedom at supper time. One of the older slaves who had broken free attempted to strike the captain of the slave ship in the head, seize his weapons, and take control of the ship. But a black youth around 17 years of age, to whom the captain had granted several favors, took the older slave's blow on his own arm, breaking the bone. So when the older slave went to take out the captain, the young one stepped in between and took the blow that was meant for the captain on his arm, breaking his arm. All right. The young slave's interference allowed the captain of the slave ship to recover and rally his crew. Under the captain's leadership, the revolt. Oh, crap. Sorry about that. Under the captain's leadership, the revolt was put down. All right, the black revolters were slain, and the ship continued to the slave colonies in America. When the ship landed, the captain granted the boy his freedom with some money. The youth was placed in the service of Robert King Carter so that he could learn how to provide for himself in a nation where blacks were slaves. Until present time, many blacks chose being liked and getting along above getting out of their socioeconomic dilemma, regardless of how they are treated. So there you have it. This is that phenomenon. All right. Whew, continuing on. It 
it's not going to work until the curses that were put on us are lifted. You can't go to college. Your enemy's schools, by the way, and try to get educated out of this. It ain't going to work. All right, you can go wherever you want to go. Those curses are going to follow you, us, I should say, until they're lifted. And the only one who can do that is the Lord. All right. <sighs> Hadn't learned yet. Keep thinking that you can get some kind of independent, uh, economic independence. And no, no. <laughs> the banksters, the elite banksters. All right, the people that stole our identity. They run this world, period. They're being allowed to. This is, again, punishment for us. And they are just the whipping stick of the Most High. All right. And that goes into uh, Psalm 17, chapter and verse 13. Continuing on. to Stephens. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. If you're really smart as you say, you'll be able to link what's going on to the scriptures. All right, all this economic uh, empowerment and all this other bullshit is not going to work. Why? I just said it. All right, we're in the hands of the people that run this world. And it just so happens they're trying to get their birthright that they sold back. And it's not going to happen. You have to understand the scriptural references to this. If you don't, you're going to be lost. It has nothing to do with being so-called black. It's a spiritual warfare. All right. Uh, I would advise you uh, because, hey, your church on, you know, your church is not going to go into this because they can't. All right. You got to understand, even if, I mean, <clears throat> you might have a few mavericks in the sense that they might go against the grain, but they have that 50 one three C's charter, you know, uh, <laughs> they muffled, all right, they're compromised, all there as a reward for misleading you and keeping you misled, all right, you know, they get that money, so they're going to continue that, because a lot of them, it's a hustle for them in the first damn place, you know, like he said, two first people for our so-called community. We're not into that, into that community crap anyway, that Baal Bereth shit. Alright. 
But he made a good point. The two worst people are that damn pastor, that preacher man, and pieces of shit like this. All right, your politicians that just so happen to look like you. All right, our people sold out. Let me get this scripture here. Uh, this is going to be, uh, let's see, Zechariah 11 uh, and 5. All right, it says the flock doomed to slaughter. Verse 5, it says, whose possessors slay them. All right, this is our oppressors, our enemies. And hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Most High, Yahweh, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. This piece of shit he's talking about, that first black mare, here we go with that shit again. Down there in Alabama, all right, he's one of those so called shepherds. But he don't give a fuck. And that's what it's talking about here. Shepherds pitted him out. Let's go into the commentary. All right. Let's just do that. Let's see. Uh, let's see. says who betray all right let's see the second peter two and three it says and through covetousness these and greedy bastards too because what what does john 8 and 44 say yeah, ye of your father the devil all right and you're gonna do the things that he does all right the devil being who? So-called white man. So, and through covetousness, and we know he's a covetous bastard, greedy beyond measure to the point of avarice. Hey, go look it up. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, and that's what all these politicians are about, boy, they can just talk your fucking ear off, make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingering not in their damnation slumber. Not. All right. It says, uh, who betray their persons or liberty or property for profit or sell them for slaves to foreigners or by their exactions and oppressions reduce them to such poverty that they are obliged to sell themselves. All right. Blessed be the, the Lord for I am rich. That is, they hypocritically and impiously pretend to return God, thanks for having put it in their power to acquire riches by such ungodly practices. And their own shepherds, that is, their chief priests, princes, and rulers, as above, pity them not. Destroy them without remorse. What did I say about sociopaths? These are these motherfuckers, they find these universities that do their bidding. They don't give a fuck about their own people. They're about pleasing massa. All right? It says... Uh, in Hamashak's time, which seems to be here referred to, like, duh. All right, goes on to the chief priest. I'm going to skip on down. It says, uh, goes into the Sadducees. Let me get my ugly mug out of the way. It says, uh, uh, let's see, uh, the chief priests and the elders who were the possessors of the flock by their traditions, the commandments of men, and their impositions on the consciences of the people will become perfect tyrants devouring their houses, engrossing their wealth, and fleecing the flock instead of feeding it. All right, what did he say in that speech that they uh, recorded with him? He pretty much said that he's only there to please, all right, the so-called white man. He said, you know, as long as he gets those numbers that around 45% or so from them, he don't give a fuck about Jake. All right. Uh... It says, uh, skipping on down, all right, it says Matthew 15 and 6, and then it says, Thus they slew the sheep of the flock, thus they sold them. They cared not what became of them, so they could uh, uh, put, they, so they could but gain their own ends 
and serve their own interest. So there you go. Goddamn shame. But our people keep, well, we vote for him because he looks like us. That same old fucking shit, time and time again. He's still, and you have to understand, he's coming from a uh, perspective of, you know, hey, he's in the world, you know, but he doesn't understand about, you know, the spiritual aspect of it, about who, re who we really are, all right, and none of this, getting this money and all this other bullshit is going to work, especially now because they're getting ready to do away with the money system as you and I know it, all right, CBDC and um, this thing happening in Ukraine now where they're uh, experimenting with the digital uh, currency a uh, few other places and that's what it's coming down to alright so uh, yeah this man's making his moves so all this that he's talking about it's null and void already alright continuing on
Mm-hmm. Which tells everyone how fucked up we are. But what do we keep saying? I keep saying about the curses. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, straight to the point. Uh, let's go to 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Most High Yahweh without power. This is referenced back to the verse 1 of this chapter. Moses is talking to the Israelites and telling them, all right, these are the conditions. All right, if you dil diligently adhere to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, hey, you're going to be blessed beyond measure. Verse 15 says, but if you don't, then all these curses are going to come upon you. And it starts at 16 and it goes to 68. And we continue. It says, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Most High Yahweh thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forevermore. See? That's a consequence. You keep reading. All right. And 48 says what? We have to go to this man, the so-called white man, in want of all things. This is why we're in the condition that we're in. All right, it ain't got nothing to do with lack of education, all that other bullshit. All right, this identifies us as the Israelites. Not on the same page. Curses. There you have it. All right. So that's pretty much it. I had you here for almost 50 minutes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, all right, that reviews this is edified. And again, this is nothing that we haven't been saying for a very long time. All right. It's just good to hear someone, you know, on the outside, so to speak, all right, to say it. Then a lot of you, because it's not us, all right, finally get it. At least this part of it. But again, to match it up with scriptures helps explain, all right, just what really is going on. All right, it goes beyond this politics bullshit, and, you know, black and all that. No, it's, it's a far deeper meaning to it, all right, because we're neither of those things, all right. And, you know, the people uh, that will get it will get it. You gotta understand, part of that curses is two thirds of us. All right, we're never going to get it. All right, and they're going to be, hey, Zechariah uh, thirteen and eight. You know, they two thirds got to go. All right, these are the people. You know, it's, it's references to ancient Egypt and the Exodus. All right, this time, not all of us is coming out. That's the point. All right, hey, so with that, hey, into the next video, um, shalom.